we're engaged and we get to that point where it's like, all right, let's have the money talk where we both kind of like show our cards and reveal what's on the table and come and tell her. It's like, all right, I've had a lot of credit card debt, but I'm working to pay it off. I'm making some progress. I got a plan, mm. blah, blah, blah. Then I say, all right, so show me yours. What, what's going on? And she takes this shoe box and just slides it across the table. I'm like, oh, what's this? I pop it open and you know what tell her it's inside? There's some, you know, a lot of credit card envelopes in there. Maybe some of them unopened. <laughs> Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. Let's start off with some good news. You don't need a complicated plan to achieve financial independence or freedom. In fact, having one probably is either slowing you down or keeping you from even starting. I've seen from others and through personal experience how having a simple plan can be an effective way to keep you moving in the right direction. Bob and Linda Lotick are here on the show today to explain how. They're the creators of Seed Time and the authors of Simple Money, Rich Life. Linda and Bob are on the podcast today to discuss how families can reset things and have a rich life. I had a chance to read their book and I loved how it had so many great takeaways. I thought Bob and Linda did a great job of balancing the head and the heart with this. You have this story of getting out of $400,000 of debt and showing the process behind that. But more importantly, they also get into the conversations they were having and they still have about the purpose behind this journey. Besides working towards financial freedom, the book also examines doing something meaningful with your money, especially on the giving side. In this episode, we get into how Bob and Linda synced up with their finances and goals, tactics and strategies they use to pursue financial freedom, and then creating an easy-to-manage financial system that allows them to live debt-free and be generous givers. We have so much to cover, so let's get started. In case you missed Bob on an earlier episode discussing forming new habits, Here's a quick overview of how he started his financial journey with Linda. Those initial conversations not only began setting the tone for their money, but their marriage. I think we need to start with the shoebox. <laughs> All right. So yes. do you want to explain the shoebox? This is kind of our sure. first money conversation. I'm not great at setting up systems <laughs> or organizing things. Or spreadsheets, <clears throat> right? Or spreadsheets. I, I'm bored by it. I get lost in it. I get, you know, distracted easily <laughs> by shiny objects. My filing system was a, well, it was actually like a file folder that I had in a drawer that was not meant for filing. <laughs> Once that got overloaded and about yay thick, I would start putting things in a shoebox and then that would go in my closet. That was my official filing system all right well we need to tell the story so we are engaged <laughs> and is what it is but it's i know right. but it's helpful it like, is helpful because we're not like this anymore and it's valuable for people who are there so we were engaged we're not like this i'm still like this <laughs> a little You've bit grown so much so we're engaged and we get to that point where it's like all right let's have the money talk where we both kind of like show our cards and reveal what's on the table and come and tell her it's like all right I've had a lot of credit card debt, but I'm working to pay it off. I'm making some progress. I got a plan, Mm. blah, blah, blah. Then I say, all right, so show me yours. What's going on? And she takes this shoe box and just slides it across the table. I'm like, oh, what's this? I pop it open and you know what tell her it's inside? There's some, you know, a lot of credit card envelopes in there. Maybe some of them unopened. Hadn't been looked Which at. Which is why, at that point, you're getting calls from debt, debt collectors, collectors in your parents' house while you're right. living there. It wasn't a great start. So for yeah, me. so that was her start. I mean, and I was in a similar situation, just about three months ahead, where I was living off of a credit card, living off of macaroni and cheese, you know, because it's like I had nothing else, and I had just, you know, kind of come to my financial head where I was just 
realizing I was a complete mess. So we didn't have great beginnings, you know, and we came from middle class homes and, you know, just buried ourselves in debt and doing silly things. But that's where the journey began for us. I can definitely relate. When we had our first chat about money, also after we got engaged, it was an eye opener and to be honest, a bit awkward. Part of it is you're coming at it from a perspective of this way of handling money makes total sense. But your other half is also thinking that. What's interesting and encouraging from reading Bob and Linda's story is how they felt comfortable enough to open up about finances because so many couples who are married or are getting married, they have this shame and a lot of guilt. And that stops them from really opening up and getting on the same page. Having a judgment-free space where you can go over more than just the numbers can be a game changer. And this may be a new thing for one or both of you. I mean, for me, honestly, I didn't grow up in a judgment-free zone. So it took me a little time. He was not judgmental. He wasn't trying to put shame or guilt on me for the mistakes that I had made and the poor decisions that I had made. But it did take me a while to get that off of me because that was something that I grew up with. It was like, well, you just kind of hide all this stuff. If you don't want anybody to know, you just hide it. And I I think part of this is just growing in my relationship with the Lord where he doesn't put that on us and he doesn't want us to feel ashamed in front of him. And honestly, that was kind of the journey that I went on. And a big part of it for sure was Bob not trying to put any of that on me. I think just walking through all of that, um, I think it really came down to what was already in my heart. I don't know if you've ever heard that analogy. It's like, if if a glass is full, here we go. This glass has a chai latte in it. If Bob bumps into it, chai latte is going to come out. If I'm already filled with <laughs> shame and guilt and tension around a subject, what's going to come out? I think it's helpful for me growing mm-hmm. in this whole thing because you know, we got into this. And again, I'm the spreadsheet guy. I'm the math guy. And so... I'm looking at the numbers. I'm like, all right, this is right. It's like, this is very black and white. You know, this is a quantitative thing. It's like, all right, this is right. This right. is the answer. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. And what you are doing, the way you're spending money, whatever, like that's wrong. My, my this filing is right, system. That's wrong. <laughs> Your filing system, whatever. The thing, is, the thing that I grew to realize that helped me a lot and helped our marriage a lot, and I think bring a lot of healthy balance is that she isn't wrong. And that mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily right. This, honestly, this is really funny, but helped me just kind of understand that God creates people differently. He wires people differently and everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. And they're oftentimes offsetting and corresponding with the person you're marrying. I was able to, and I'm really thankful, like start to get an understanding for some of the value that she brought to the table and yeah. how I needed it. I needed what she brought to the table instead of just assuming that her way is wrong, my way is right, because I have the numbers, you know? Yeah. That helped, I think, a lot with all of this and with our marriage health when it comes to money. Yeah, and that also gave me confidence to say, I actually do yeah. have something to say. I actually have value to add. Instead of for a long time, I just thought, well, he knows what he's doing and I don't, so I'm just going to do whatever he tells me to do. But I started going, well, Instead of coming at it, well, like, wait a second, I'm I'm going to do, I want to do it this way. I didn't have to come at it from an anger point of view. I could come at it like, actually, what if we did it this way? Have you ever thought about that? You know, because he was treating me with so much respect in this area. I love the honesty about the give and take with working with one another respectfully, because sometimes it is difficult when you have such different approaches. After working on this foundation, Linda and Bob were able to get some real momentum with getting out of debt and building up their finances. A huge help was systemizing things with what Bob likes to refer to as the straight A approach. Attention, automate, adjust, and accountability. One of the things I'm always trying to do with money, when I've been in this world now for over 20 years from banking to financial services to now being a whatever online blogger, podcaster, all that stuff, just talking about money for so long. I'm always obsessed with trying to simplify things and like trying to pull them out of the complexities and make them digestible and put them in a little package. That was a big part of what we tried to do in this Mm -hmm. book. And as I was taking this big picture perspective of 
all right, how would I start over now? Knowing everything I've known, everything I've learned from these last couple of decades, how would I start over now? How would I talk to myself in my mess and say, all right, this is the simple little path you can follow to get out of that mm -hmm. and to get on a firm footing. So the first one, like you mentioned, is paying attention. This is something that I think for people like you and I, and honestly, probably a lot of people who are listening to a financial podcast probably already do this, but most of the world doesn't. We have to actually pay attention to what's going on with our money. This is the same thing like, what do you hear with nutritionists? Have you ever been a nutritionist and you go talk to them and say, all right, I want you to write down everything you eat every day. Let's do a food journal and see what you're eating, see where the problem spots are and whatever. Simply by writing everything down, you suddenly start eating better. It's like you don't even have to try to eat better. You literally just write everything down. And because you see clearly what's actually going, what, what's actually happening, like you get your behaviors begin to shift and mm -hmm. change. You know this, but it's the same way with money. Like when we actually see what's going on, when we actually are paying attention, when some people do write everything down, and that's a great exercise that works well, but but even simply using a tool like Mint or Personal Capital, just to actually be able to look back and say, all right, the last 30 days, we spent this much on groceries, or we spent this much on eating out. Um, because so many people- like, Or on Starbucks. Yeah, have no yeah. idea how much they're actually spending. Right. And so to be able to do that, like it's just such a head start for so many people. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how you really succeed with your finances if you're not paying attention to what's going on. You know what I mean? I think most people will be shocked by certain areas with their budget. Like, you know, there are certain ones where you look at and you go, okay, that makes sense. And then there's always one where you're just- completely surprised something's wrong <laughs> somebody hacked my account That's yeah not right <laughs> yeah. yeah it seems small but just being aware of how your money is being used can shift things in a better direction another key way to get more control over your finances is by automation i remember reading probably four or five different books that just talked mm -hmm. about automating saving for retirement building up savings and emergency fund or giving or whatever the thing is and like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fine. That'll probably help a little bit. I'll get to that eventually. And I just kept on putting it off. And and I don't know why. It's like a five-minute thing. It takes, like, no time. But I kept on putting it off. But if I trace back my trajectory, like, there is a clear inflection point from the day I decided I'm going to automate this to not. Because, again, so many of us depend on our willpower. And that's the thing that financially successful people, like, they don't have more willpower than everybody else. They just learn to automate. Like, it's just that simple. They mm -hmm. automate the things that are most important that they know they need to do. They don't depend on waiting to the end of the month to see if there's enough money, to right. see if they remember, if they feel like it, whatever, any of those things. And so automation is such an important key. And it's the way to like set it and forget it and make your life yeah. easier. So you don't have to think about it. Like, yeah. it's just a no brainer. This is super important for people like me who want to have it together but just don't is it's like you just make it so that you don't have to ever think about it again you think about it once and then you're done yep. yeah yeah because for me there's no way i could remember to <laughs> or it just wouldn't happen for one reason or another you know yeah. automation has always been helpful for us but in all honesty these last two years with everything going on it's been a huge time saver during the pandemic we were taking care of things switching the kids to remote learning work had shifted for both of us and then my mom in the middle of the pandemic wanted to move closer to us so we had a lot on our plate what gave us some peace of mind is that we knew that our system was mostly automated all we had to do was check in with it once a week just to make sure everything was paid off so you might think of it as a small thing but it can have a huge impact it can help you have the space to focus on the more important things instead of stressing over the bills. Again, we're trying to go with an effective yet simple plan. That's the thing. It's like so many of these things are just really quick and simple. It's a one-time yeah. decision that you make that will pay dividends. I mean, literally and figuratively, you know, for years and years to come. I definitely appreciated how Bob and Linda also covered adjusting things. You have to have a flexible financial system. Life happens and you need to be able to change and switch numbers as needed. Or as you are getting more comfortable with your new budget, you might find ways to further optimize. And then, of course, accountability, which is kind of built in when you're married. You're encouraging one another. You have someone you're accountable to. Now, I know sometimes people hear accountability and they think this is another word for the blame game. But Bob and Linda have a different approach with that. I think the thing I would add to that is just, again, like, 
I'm always looking to systematize things as much as possible because <laughs> it's how I roll. With that accountability, it's like, yeah, we do have an accountability factor with each of us, but at the mm -hmm. same time, like we both need external accountability. This is where having a budget that actually will hold you accountable is so important mm -hmm. because I think, you know, one of the things we struggled with for so long was we were using budgeting tools that the extent of the accountability was that the number on the screen would turn red and it would let us know. And it's like, is that really, at least in our case, that did not keep us from going over. It didn't like, it's just, now we're just like, well, we'll fix it next month. Yep. We just keep on kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. And and anyway, we just found that wasn't holding us accountable financially. It wasn't giving us a wall to actually bump up against. Mm -hmm. So finding that, finding tools that actually help you stay accountable are just really, really important. Between how they communicated and the system they built, Bob and Linda were hitting some major goals, including financial freedom and independence. Many people get excited about this part, this idea of, I don't have to work again, I'm free. I can appreciate that, especially if you're not happy with work and how things are handled at your company or in the industry you're in. However, with financial independence, there's so much more to that. One of the things I appreciate about the journey is how it helps you become more aware. It can also nudge you to prioritize your goals and start shifting your habits so that you can reach them. This framework can be a game changer, but as Bob and Linda noted in their book, there's a balance to keep. You have to be careful that this path to financial independence is not just focused on the numbers and optimizations. I've seen conversations online, hearing from others about how it's all focused on getting to a million dollars or whatever that number is, or trying to get to this number as fast as possible. There's no mention of quality of life, maybe shifting your work schedule so you can have more time with the family, and no discussion of what you're actually working towards. It's simply getting out of the rat race. I thought Bob and Linda had some fantastic thoughts about that. A lot of people forget, and I know that I forgot this, or never even realized it, and it's so common sense, but you have to be wary when you have moving goalposts. Oftentimes with a lot of these financial goals, especially when it's an arbitrary number or whatever, it's like, when I have a million dollars in the bank, then I will do X or Y, then I will be at peace, then I will be comfortable, then I will give more, whatever the thing is. And those goalposts they just always move. And so this is one of those things for us. Giving has always been a really important part of our journey and just something that has always been spent on our heart and how it's been the big motivator for us to actually try to earn more. It's been that. And within that, even though we had that kind of desire in us, like we still have the desire to spend too much money on ourselves and to whatever. Like, <laughs> so both of those desires are there. They kind of fight against each other. One of the things that we began doing that has helped this a lot was we, at age 31, we began giving, basically giving our age. So we've been giving 31% uh, at age 31. We've been increasing that by 1% every year when we turn, we're the same age, you know. That has been so great for us because... <clears throat> It's forced us to grow in the direction that we want to grow. Our giving is automatically growing. Presumably our income will hopefully continue going up as well. And, and it just puts us in a position where we're doing the thing kind of automatically that is most important to us. We've found that to be really, really helpful to kind of handle this tension of not getting too hung up on whatever the you know financial goal is at the moment. I mean, keeping first things first. You know what I mean? If you're like us, you probably have quite a number of accounts between the two of you, including your old 401ks. It can be difficult to stay on top of everything, especially when your old employer switches providers, which is what happened with my husband. Here's where our sponsor Capitalize can help. Capitalize helps you find and roll over an old 401k into an IRA of your choice for free. They handle the entire process. And yes, that includes calling your old employer or the 401k provider on your behalf. If you're ready to make managing your old 401ks much easier, find out more at simplifyandenjoy.com slash capitalize. Before we wrap up, I want to focus on a few key takeaways I grabbed from my conversation with Bob and Linda. The first is, Start with your why and goals before jumping into the numbers. 
One of the best ways I've seen couples and families sync up on their finances is to actually just put a pause button on the numbers first and instead focus in on the goals. Get excited about what you want to do in the next year, few years, 10 years, you get the idea. And once the two of you have a clear idea of what you want, it's much easier to now look at the numbers and start working backwards to see what needs to be adjusted so that you can move your money in that direction. The second one is take a team-based approach with your family's finances. What do I mean by that? If you're thinking about sports teams, you'll notice that even though they're on the same team, they each have different roles. For example, when you're looking at football, you have defense and offense, and many other sports are the same way. What helps a team to thrive is when they're playing to their strengths and they're working together on that. With most families, you're not going to exactly see eye to eye on all the small details, but if you have the same big picture goal, you could actually use these different perspectives to your advantage because you'll be looking for different opportunities and you can not only strengthen your finances, but your family. Finally, giving is a fantastic goal. Many times in the personal finance space, I understand we highlight goals like paying down debt, investing for retirement, or saving up to buy a house, and those are fine. But I don't think there's enough discussion about including giving. I know this is a very personal decision, And it is not a competition of what percentage so-and-so is giving. Instead, this is a great conversation to have as a family about what matters to you, what projects you want to support within your community and beyond. So include that when you're coming up with your financial goals for the year. What would you like to give? It could be a certain amount, a percentage, or it could be arranging your finances and schedule so that you can volunteer more. These are all fantastic ways that you can give. Don't forget, if you are trying to pursue a goal and you're looking for ways to revamp your budget, kind of reset things, we do have a free course called 5 Days to 5K. It walks you through in a week through your email on ways that you can find, save, and earn a little extra money for your goals that you have. You can go to simplifiedandenjoy.com slash 5K. Special thanks to Linda and Bob for being a part of this episode. Please check out their book, Simple Money, Rich Life, if you'd like to learn more about their journey and lessons learned. I'll include a link to it in the show notes, as well as some of my favorite posts from their site, Seed Time, and other handy resources. Next week on the podcast, I think a lot of us are gearing up for summer break, ready to relax, go on vacation. It's also a good time to do a quick snapshot review of how things are going and streamline things. So Bob and Linda gave us some great ideas on how we can do that, but we're going to put it into practice. Next episode, we're going to go over some key areas for you to review so that you can make things easier on yourselves and finish this year up on a high note. So if you don't want to miss out on that episode, make sure you're subscribed. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Audible, wherever you get your podcasts. The theme was by Staircases with additional music by various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, I want to say thank you, not just for listening, but for being a part of the community. Every tweet, review, and share you post gets the word out so more families can simplify things and enjoy what truly matters. And I love chatting with you and seeing your comments in our Thriving Families Facebook group. So if you haven't already, please join us there. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.